Hello and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. Today is a very special one. It was voted on Twitter from fans as our horror expansion continues. Today I'm sitting in with Chris who is going to tell me how wrong I am with <laughs> how this I feel this movie didn't hold up. Oof. It's it's Halloween, the original Halloween. The immortal Halloween. The immortal Halloween. Uh, yeah, you're you're so wrong. Yeah, I'm I'm sure we'll get into everything w- uh, as we go through the story. But Chris, tell me how this movie affected you. Uh, I would say it's actually the first film I ever remember seeing. Uh, I was allowed to see it when I was about three or four. Uh, mum and dad had no problems letting me stay up one night to watch it, and that started everything really for me uh and my brother was never allowed to watch it so i remember i used to have to retell him the entire story because he was older uh the, the entire story of the film to him over and over again because he wasn't allowed to watch it oh I, I know apparently he was more sensitive than i was i was just dead inside from a, an early <laughs> age i think uh so ever since that it's been it's the it's this go-to it's the staple it's the film that started it all pretty much yeah is it, it is is it possibly the first slasher no, now I get to be really nervous. Ah. Uh, it's accounted to be the first slasher, but go back maybe three years before for Black Christmas. Uh, and Black Christmas technically was your first slasher, um, which started the whole point of view of the killer and did the whole things that Halloween kind of took on really well. Halloween gets a lot of credit for being the very first kind of slasher because I think it sets up types and archetypes and that kind of follow through to a lot of it because of the success of halloween as well it was a huge success so uh they all kind of copied halloween but i definitely say it's the most influential slasher of its time uh because it did spawn a lot of movies yeah uh not long after this you actually had uh your nightmares in elm street your hellraiser Everything. No holiday was safe at this point because you had Halloween, you had Black Christmas, you had Friday the 13th, you had Graduation Day, you had Happy Birthday to Me, you had Saturday the 14th, you, I'm sure there's more, Mother's Day, uh, there's loads of just holiday themed horror, like no day was really safe, uh, which, you know, they're all kind of, yeah, they're not as good as Halloween, but um, yeah, and then it's that way, then the retread of just the Halloween sequels, then all came out after that as well, so... And obviously the reboots, which yes, uh, I kind of like. I love the reboots. Oh, I'm a big fan. I was going to direct you to my actual prop from the original Halloween reboot on the shelf. Whereabouts? The mask in the frame. It's the original one of the original masks on the top of the fireplace. To the right hand side. Right hand side. It's one of the original masks used (gasps) uh, in the Rob Zombie. I've had that for a while. Well, yeah, not on eBay. That, that's, Thank that's, you, Mr. That's, Zombie, who sells it. That's going to be uh, disappearing under my bag in a way. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no, I love, yes. th- I, love, I love the whole kind of, yeah. Again, it's not like pizza. There's no such thing as a bad Halloween, apart from Halloween sex. Uh, three? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh. You can't say Halloween 3 is a bad... Halloween 3 is a brilliant film. It it's a brilliant movie. It shouldn't be a Halloween. Halloween. Yes! But... We only say that because of after Halloween 4 and you think the whole idea was to set up this franchise of different films set about Halloween. Halloween 3 is an amazing film. Oh, amazing Just soundtrack as well. Ha- if it didn't have the Halloween title, it'd be perfect. It's oh, like it's Catwoman if it, didn't ha- if it wasn't associated no, with Catwoman. No, you cannot say Catwoman. It's going to be perfect. No, 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 no. Yeah. I was going to say perfect, but... Uh, oh, part, yeah. <laughs> Meow. She's um, like a cat. She sleeps on top of a uh, on top Halitosis of a shell. cat, you know. Yeah. Is that like, is that like Halle Berry, Halitosis? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because... Yeah, it pure briefs on her and that's how she gets her oh, okay funnily enough blocked a lot of that out oh yeah it's still ingrained thanks james the only thing i can remember is mystique scandalous that's the only <laughs> thing i can remember <laughs> from it uh right off topic uh, yes but you yeah, know halloween 3 is a brilliant film i'm happy that's in the halloween franchise it's like the bastard child of the halloween movies it's so good it's so so good sorry i love halloween 3 I'm sure we will delve into that yes, sooner, yes. sooner th- rather than later. Um, but yeah, so Halloween just kind of it did influence everything as well. And for a film that was made for no money, it made such a huge money back. And it's just that way that it's it's so stylishly done as well. Um, it's quite a simple film. There's nothing really happens in it. Really. Well, seeing as you are the horror beast, how about you tell us about the story? Uh, 
Yes, there you go. <laughs> it was a dark and stormy night. Uh, so, yeah, Halloween, it pretty much opens on Halloween night. Um, you see, starts from the point of view of someone, you don't know who it is. He's watching a couple kiss, and then he kind of gets into the house, and then stabs the girl's death, and then you realize... A pervy, let's be honest. A little bit pervy. Uh, and then he, he realizes, uh, once he kind of follows down the stairs, that it's a young boy. Um, uh, it's like an eight-year-old boy. Um, and then it kind of cuts to... His parents outside. Yeah, his parents outside kind of discover him. I'm trying to say it cuts to it's like 10 years later. It's 10 years later. And basically, uh, it's again the night before Halloween and it's a doctor going to transfer Michael Myers, who you kind of know is now the kind of the young boy. And then he escapes from the hospital and then the rest of the film is set back in the same town that the original murder happens on Halloween day um with a group of babysitters who seem to have triggered his kind of sisterly yeah attraction. kind of stalkery yeah kinda. so he kind of one in particular so he spends the whole night kind of terrorizing them uh and that's kind of but there's a kind of supernatural element to it as well that doesn't quite explain that how it's almost like halloween's doing something he's kind of unstoppable yeah um, and it's just amazing yeah throughout the uh the start of the movie he's seen stalking them and you're kind of going like there's a lot of stalking I'll yeah, give it that. yeah there is a very lot of stalking. stalkery like uh i did like one of the many things i did like in this movie was the change in tone of the music the classic theme yes almost like doubled in speed the moment that uh they're shouting at him like for yeah. driving by and stuff yeah there's like so many things and music's such a huge part of it i think you cannot talk about halloween without thinking of the halloween music i think as well oh, definitely um, and it's one of those things that's like Psycho or Jaws. The music does more of the scare than the actual scare does. Uh, and Halloween itself, when it was made, it's that way they originally showed it without any soundtrack because they hadn't recorded it. And they were told that the film would never be a success and it would be a failure, blah, 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 blah. And then they recorded the music. John Carpenter did it himself. And pretty much then it, it, that was it. That's kind of sold the deal for them. Uh, the music is a huge part of it. And it's so simple as well. Such a simple just simple, a couple yeah, notes it's just a couple of notes which then every slasher film after that tried to rip off um literally every slasher film tried to rip off the halloween music but then friday the 13th has got an iconic kind of sound to it as well kind of it's got its themes with his nightmare on elm street it's a big part of kind of almost it's like their signature it's yeah like, it's kind of almost identifying that the killer's there without having to actually show you kind of almost um but yeah there's nothing like the halloween theme you can't not have a Halloween movie without the Halloween theme, really. Did yeah. three do that, though? No, but three has an amazing soundtrack. <laughs> I love the Halloween three soundtrack. It's one of my favourite soundtracks. Uh, again, all John Carpenter. Uh, it's just pure electronic, just kind of sinisterness. Because um, I think, as well, it's so simple, kind of, in Halloween. But then this kind of starts, and John Carpenter's kind of electronic music kind of got more and more after this. And it's just, every film, the scores get better and better. Obviously, apart from Ghost of Mars. It's one of the, those movies. It's a bad movie. It's very bad. Yeah. I actually, we speaking of meeting celebrities, I met Natasha Henstridge. I served her once uh, and when I worked in a coffee shop. Uh, and I realised it was her. I think it was when she was going out with Darius. Yeah, yes. I was actually going to say that. So it was, we recognised her straight away. And I was like, oh my God, it's uh, Natasha Henstridge from Species. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then I really wanted to say something about Species. Uh, <laughs> and then A good movie. A, a good, really good movie. And then I said, oh my God, I hate Ghosts of Mars so much. <laughs> and then she kind of just kind of was like, and she kind of laughed. And I went, I love it, but I do hate it at the same time. But, you know, it's no showgirl, so it's not that kind of, you know, love-hate. It's just dreadful. It's just, like, it's a really bad Marlon Manson video. That's what it looks like. Yeah, also the main enemy looks a little bit like Glenn Danzig, I would say. Yeah, yeah. It is, like, a really weird metal video with Ice Cube in it and Jason Statham. Good work now, isn't it? Yeah, uh, <laughs> so everyone's got to start, start somewhere. Alex Salmon's favourite John Carpenter film. Real truth. Oh, God. No wonder he didn't make it really. I know, exactly. I, that would have made me just go, like, Nicola, I'd, I'd rather have Nicola Sturgeon. Someone <laughs> should actually ask her that. What is your favourite John Carpenter <laughs> film? That should be a question for all politicians. What's your favourite John Carpenter film? And then we can just gauge them on it. <laughs> if you say Village of the Damned, that is it. It's over. That's probably pretty so me. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Village of the Damned. Oh, no, it has to be something really recent. It's something really shit. <laughs> has John Carpenter done something really shit? And I can't even think. I, I'm just I don't think, think he's done anything really <laughs> shit, but... Yeah, I think Ghost of Mars is pretty much it. Yeah. Um, nah, I'm trying to think of all the 90s ones. But no, anyway, so <laughs> Halloween. Halloween, um, yes. 
so yeah, it's just it's just so perfect in its simplicity. That's what's amazing. And also the fact that I mean Michael Myers mask is terrifying because it's so simple. It's just a white face and it's that way that you get to project whatever you want on it almost kind of thing and again the simple it's just a william shatner mask yeah they took the eyebrows off and slightly warped and painted white that was all it was but it was supposed to be originally a cloud mask like a big bozo mask yeah uh which would have been scary but it wouldn't have had the same impact i think as well it's just one of those things like scream does it really well the ghoul face yeah the ghost face uh the just faceless killer you've got to have a good mask i think if you're going to have a killer with a mask um and there's so many films try it and then fail um and then you think you know you need a really good mask uh and again halloween kind of started the mask killer kind of thing you never kind of had that until halloween uh and just how perfect is jamie lee curtis just she's just amazing she is the archetype she then set the staple for every female kind of main character in horror films after this her character became this kind of template that everyone tried to copy and which kind of this whole final girl kind of syndrome that always easily identifiable but she's just so good in it and she is just perfect in it yeah um, and i just yeah i also started my really weird crush on jamie lee curtis when i was a kid as well she's kind of mannish she was a little bit mannish she's a hands- she's a handsome lady that's the only way you can really describe her uh as you were saying about this started the female lead she out of her her and her friends she's the most bookish i, I was going to say i don't want to sound cruel like virginish? Are you slut shaming her friends? No. Uh, I wouldn't say virginal. I would say bookish. Yeah, nerd. She, well, nerd. She's, she's I'm nerdy. saying that she's nerdy. holding books as we say this. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't want to be that film student, but I'm going to be that <laughs> film student. The, the beauty of her character is that her two friends, or well, two friends and their partners, they die because they're distracted by sex. And the whole thing is she's not distracted by sex. So she kind of knows what's going on. And throughout the film, she knows what's going on. She, she kind of knows something's things. not... Yeah, she starts noticing stuff. Um, like that scene right there uh, we've got in the background. Yeah. Uh, Michael Myers coming out from the hedge, just staring down the street and then just standing back and disappearing. And that's... Yeah. What's what's creepier than, than thinking, man. thinking that you yeah. saw something then being told nothing's there and also from a distance you can't quite tell that there's something off with his face it's that way that yeah and this is like in the film this is like the third time she's seen him already in the space of like 10 minutes so it's just this kind of thing that she's aware something's not right but the other girls are very much distracted about their plans for that evening so and it's basically sex that kills the other two girls because annie dies on the way to meet her boyfriend uh and linda dies right after sex yeah. so so it's the message is don't people have don't have sex because it kills be a very kind of handsome mannish lady and like books carry some books carry some books and uh, look after children and a knitting bag she's got a knitting yeah, bag yeah that's which I think is awesome and i never noticed this i mean i've seen halloween for a million times and then i went to go see halloween in the cinema a few years ago and they showed like this amazing restoration of it and i then noticed that her her actual like um knitting bag has her initials on it ls engraved at the top and i was like oh, i can't believe i never noticed that <laughs> uh so anyway yeah uh and yeah, that's she- it so yeah they're going babysitting on halloween and she's an unlikely hero she really did start the whole yeah. uh, unlikely female hero while all these british other guys and whatever are thrown against the beasts and monsters they die yeah I mean, they're the one that comes out on top there's not a lot of well i would say there's not a lot of male characters the other kind of male character in the film the other kind of main leads apart from michael myers and uh laurie strode is uh michael myers doctor dr sam lewis and he's basically just there this kind of voice constantly telling uh, of what he's capable of he's kind of this thing that he kind of builds the character for you because obviously michael myers isn't going to speak and it's that way you're not going to see a lot of him until the end you don't get an actual reveal of his mask to maybe in the last like 30 minutes t- 20 minutes of the movie um so it's that way that he kind of builds up the suspense of what's kind of not right with michael myers and again he doesn't quite save laurie strode it's that way that laurie's smart she fights back and she fights back quite intelligently as well yep and so she she makes like a garrote out of like a, a wire hanger <laughs> i mean like i mean i don't think i'd think that smart on my feet if i was locked in a cupboard and something no nah, definitely just be like 
clawing with my hands. Yeah, you just start weeping and then just basically like end it all now. Um, but yeah, so it's this started everything pretty much. I would say everything from this point kind of built up every horror film and every lead. And it became almost a cliche that you always had these kind of bookish women uh, fighting some psychotic that you never really knew why they were doing it. And I think that became a worse trend that the more they try and over explain a situation, the kind of more convoluted it becomes as well. It's yeah, like, like you, the simplicity of just why he's doing it. He's like just doing it because Scream was very much a a, a cluster, but it was a, a a kind of a new age for yeah. horror. And it played tribute to everything that came before it. It wasn't making, it was making fun of it, and it wasn't making fun of it at the same time. It was that way that it paid a lot of tribute, and it kind of restarted the whole horror boom again. I mean, horror comes through phases. It always comes every ten years, fifteen years or so, and it's always one film in particular that will start the trend. Halloween was the one that started it in the late seventies and right through to the kind of the mid eighties when the kind of horror then died. Uh, Scream brought it back again. And then I would say, and I hate to say it, but I would say Paranormal Activity was the one that brought it back yeah, again. Yeah. Uh, and then started this whole found footage genre. Whereas Scream brought this whole teen kind of horror, which pretty much slasher films are. They're just teen horror, but they became a bit more savvy in these films. And then there was just, um, felt like there was a million of them as well. Yeah. Came out in the 90s. God, Urban Legend. Yeah, Jeepers Creepers. Yeah. yeah. Um, God, there is more. And they're all just escaped. <laughs> I know what you did last summer. But there was just what it always felt like there was always one constant, like the faculty. Yeah. Oh, the faculty is so good. Such a good film. Uh, but there was just so many of them that just kind of kept coming out and had quite big celebrities in them at the time. Uh, they were kind of edgy, whereas these kind of seventies and eighties ones didn't. Yeah, have it's kind of like Jim Lee Curtis became a celebrity because of this film, and it's that way because it was so big. Whereas I don't think that the main girl and you know Slumber Party Massacre is, you know, this is maybe as well known as her. <laughs> She should be, but, you know, she's not. Um, so all these kind of films that came out and kind of tribute, yeah, I think Jamie Lee Curtis was made, made a career on them. And did a whole slew of horror films after this. Did, like, a chunk over the space of three years because she went on to do this uh, Halloween 2. She did Road Games. She did Terror Train. She did Prom Night. And then she did The Fog. And then stopped doing horror films and then didn't go back to them until Halloween H20, 20 years later, pretty much. Uh, because she felt she was being typecast too much. Uh, but she set yeah. it up herself. Fair enough. Yeah, she made a career on it, and she kind of acknowledges she made a career on it. So, And then is now back doing, like, obviously when she did Scream Queens and stuff like that, she's kind of acknowledging it again. Um, it's kind of that, she's like the Ripley kind of character. She's that kind of iconic. She's right up there with kind of Ripley. And whereas also for Friday the 13th, never had that one character that it's like basically the story of kind of halloween is not just about michael myers it's about laurie strode as well whereas friday the 13th never really you never not you didn't care about the female leads it they were interchangeable there was always a different one in every film yeah no one ever really carried over to the sequels same kind of with your nightmare and stuff well you had nancy well you had nancy for and one three and no nightmare what do you call her alice yeah alice for four and five alice. I love that? Alice. Alice is just kind of uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Four. Uh, it's such a good film, but uh, it's that way that you, yeah, you need if you're going to set something up, you need this kind of this kind of the an anti villain for the villain almost. Hellraiser had it as well. You had kind of her name just went right in my head. I watched it the other night as well. Um, I know the actress's name. That's really bad. Oh my god, <laughs> that is really bad. What is wrong with me? Um, Kirsty. Uh, from Hellraiser, uh, who kind of came in and out of them as well. So I think you kind of need that and kind of anti-heroes for something to fight. But, um, yeah. So what what does not stand up for you in Halloween? I think you actually covered it within the first, like, two minutes of <laughs> talking about it. Not much happens. It's Why is that a bad thing? I, know, I know. It's probably just my change in taste over the years, like... Uh, the other night messaged about it saying oh it's probably the first time I've seen it in over a decade like it's it is a good movie I did like it back in the day when I was yeah. getting subjected to small horror stuff like uh, Nightmare a couple of times yeah. uh, Hellraiser absolutely love them and I loved this when it came out but just uh, I don't know it's like there's those movies not a lot happens as well and I don't know if it's maybe a 
just don't connect as much to Halloween. But the reboots, uh, the reboot and the sequel, yeah, uh, are absolutely phenomenal. I love them. Yeah, I mean, the, my only, not my only gripe with the reboots is, and more so than the first one, not the second one, is that I didn't particularly like the Laurie Strode character that much. I just didn't. I don't know what it was about. I kind of liked her friends a bit more because they were a bit more cooler. But um, I think as a kid as well, it's kind of I don't want to that way that I always kind of re- related to these kind of characters because they always were kind of outcasts a little bit and they were a little bit nerdy and they were a little bit kind of you know their friends made fun of them and stuff like that. And I always kind of related to them. Whereas yeah, that's what I love about the reboot sequel uh, because it's the idea that it kind of looks back at her again and she doesn't follow you think she's going to follow the kind of cliche sequel heroin types of just snapping she's going to snap at one point and then she's going to fight back and everything's going to be great and then she just doesn't and she's just like fucked the whole situation has fucked her over and she just can't she can't fight anymore whereas that's what's great about h2o when h2o came out it was just watching kind of Laurie Strode's A and this whole thing turned her into like an alcoholic and, and she was pill popping. And then that one moment, Proper she just, traumatized. Yeah, yeah, she just decides to fight back. Uh, it's such an amazing moment as well. But yeah, for her, it took 20 years for that to happen. Obviously, some people, it's usually the next sequel and they're fine and stuff like that. But um, I like that it's slow. I really do. I like the fact that it's such a slow it's not a slow build because it's not a slow build to nothing really happens but then i can understand if you've not watched it in a long time yeah i watch this every year at halloween so it's like a staple like as i do love how michael Myers is done in the movie it's he's very slow methodical yeah he's always always watching which is uh, a good theme for yeah. uh stalkers out there yeah <laughs> uh, he's off the stock yeah, Take he's like the king of the stalkers. Do it on a do it on a special day. Aye, yeah. M- make that day special. Make it count. Yeah, make it like just a, well, they're all kind of been covered. So pick like a random special day. Like there's not been like a Martin Luther King killer. Oh well, the person the person who killed Martin Luther King, obviously. <laughs> uh, but there's not really been like you know set on that day. Yeah. Thanksgiving. I'm sure there's been a Thanksgiving horror film. There is a Thanksgiving there horror film. There probably actually. is. No, there is. I just can't remember the name of it now. But there is one. Uh, just pick a random day. Queen's birthday, you know. She's got two, so you can, you know, come back and do a sequel and quite quickly. And then the theme song, Goodbye Killer Queen. Yeah. Um, whereas, yeah, so it's, I see, it's just, I think, also the cinematography in this film looks just so beautiful. Uh, it's just all these amazing John Carpenter wide shots that just kind of make it look really good, which none of these, in, I would never say they're inferior kind of copycat films that all came out in this kind of time slashers are my my thing they're my baby i always love a slasher film um and i love that slashers have their own subgenres within slashers but it's just this way that this one i would say is one of the most well-filmed ones it's such slow paced and it's just it's quite well written as well and i know john carpenter left all the kind of female stuff to deborah hill and she wrote all the kind of the girl stuff and the babysitter stuff uh, and he wrote all the Dr. Loomis stuff, which I think is a really great idea. I think that's why the female characters in this come across as so genuine. And I was like, because they're actually written by a woman. Yeah, instead uh, of being forced. Yeah, it's that way that it's like a genuine dialogue um, that kind of might happen and doesn't sound ridiculous because there's nothing worse than like watching a horror film or something like that. And then it's just got a character in it and you're like, you're clearly being written by a man. You can feel it straight away. And it's like no woman would ever say such a thing. Um, don't get me started on Wonder Woman and how amazing it is. Oh, um, exactly. So, uh, but yeah, so it's just it's just so perfectly simple. That's what's amazing about it, and it made so much money for them, so so much money. It was the highest grossing film, independent film, until the Blair Witch. Shit. Yeah, Blair Witch knocked it off its pedestal, but it was the highest grossing because it was made for such little money. And literally just made so, so much money after that. And constant, like, every year. And it, it, it had the right formula. If you make a film that is A, set in a, a horror film that's set on Halloween, which is an ingenious idea, and then it's that way that they can release it every Halloween. And it's that way it can get re-released and re-released and re-released. And it's one of these films I remember being on television a lot when I was a kid as well. Yeah. So um, it's, one of the, it's still on television to this day, Halloween. So it's kind of a staple 
of kind of just being around and i think every generation has kind of grown up with that as well so yeah it works it does uh as we said it's actually deemable to get a reboot that's the thing it, it yeah it was that popular and it had that many sequels that it actually got made well remade uh for a current current audience you know yeah and then getting now it's getting remade again oh what yeah uh, it's Danny McBride that's doing it. Oh, okay. He's writing it. Uh, and there's this whole thing going round that the original two houses that they filmed the end of Halloween and the two baby houses are getting babysat. Oh, please tell me they're still up. They're there, but it's that way. Apparently, there's, they've been reconditioned to look like they're in the 70s. And apparently, somebody said there was filming going on near the houses and there was screaming going on. But then they've tried to answer back saying, oh, no, we were filming an American Horror Story there. And it, people are like, no, they were distinctively looking like they were in the seventies. So I th- apparently they're saying that it's going to be set originally in the seventies. Yes. It's going to go back, and they're taking the whole sister element out of it. It's going back to the kind of original Halloween that you don't know why he's picked on whoever. If they're doing the Laurie Strode character, I'm assuming they will be. Um, but Zombies Halloween was really good, and I can understand why a lot of people had an issue with it. But I liked it. I thought it was good. I liked Rob Zombie. It was gritty. It told this. It kind of updated the tale of. Pretty much how someone becomes a serial killer. Yeah, it delved into Michael yeah. Myers' brain. And he was actually a serial. He wasn't just this. Because it, it took away the supernatural element of him. Yeah. And he just was mental. He was just not right. It was like his family, life, everything. He was. It was just. Yeah, it was a bit over the top. It was kind of very Rob Zombie. But the sequel is such an undeserved. I Dare I use the word masterpiece? I think the second. Halloween has Halloween 2. It's amazing. It's so, so good, and I think it was really brave. And I, deep down, I think that's what he wanted to make, and he had to make the remake to get to do that. And I feel really bad, because I think the sequel was panned, whereas the first one... I, I liked weird. them both. Yeah, the really sequel good. was just really, really good. It's just re- Again, it's quite quiet. Nothing really, really happens in it until the end. Um, but it's just this kind of story of... It, it's not even about Michael Myers. It's just about Laurie Strode um, and not being able to cope, which, again, who's still kind of covered that ground. And the original Halloween 2 sequel is actually really good as well. I love Halloween too. I, I watched that fairly it. recently and I actually it really up. enjoyed it. It seemed quite seamless for two films that were made like three or four years apart uh, to actually be set literally like a minute after the original. Uh, they kind of work really well apart from Jamie Lee Curtis's really bad wig. Um, <laughs> but they kind of go seamless and it just ups. It, he basically updated it for the modern horror audience because after these films in those four years the body counts got higher they got gorier and they kind of did that so uh, halloween 2 is a bit more gorier uh, than halloween is well it's a lot gorier actually it's yeah it really is because halloween's not gory at all uh which i always wonder why it's still in 18 mm, it's well I get the kids it's, it's probably a human character killing people you I think know a child a child yeah. killing someone i think it's something yeah it's, it always kind of makes it that kind of that inappropriate Taboo. but yeah so that's my thoughts on it. I'm thinking all the sequels, we can go into them all. I mean, four and five, they're all right. He's about his niece. They're not so bad. They're all right. The fourth's yeah. all right. Uh, fifth one's a bit, mm. And then the sixth one is just dreadful. The Curse of Michael Myers. The one with Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd, Paul Rudd. Oh, Paul Rudd. Ant-Man. Ant-Man. Yeah. I cannot remember that. Oh, it's really, really strange, and it builds up this whole thing about there's this kind of evil cult that kind of worships Michael Myers and it's got runes and it's all this stuff and it's just really, really... Bi- Donald Pleasance is in it as well. And it's like it was the last one. He died right at the end of filming it. So he disappears in the last like minute of the film because clearly he's died. Uh, but it's just... Re- he plays Tommy Doyle. Yeah. Paul Rudd plays Tommy Doyle. Um, the kind of the child, the Emily Curtis babysitting. He plays him but older. Uh, and, it, and it's just... It's dreadful. <laughs> it's just really bad. I remember being really excited about it, and it starts off quite then well, it just and then it just just it's dreadful. Wet balloon, uh, yeah. And then that kind of spawns again. It's like these films are so good that they will always get remade over and over and over again. Is that that there's no original ideas? It's a franchise. There's money to be made off it. Yeah, so it's made for a new generation. Punted out merch that you will probably buy. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I've got a very bare flat, and it's very yeah. Minimal. No, there's nothing on the walls nothing here. Nothing on the walls here at all. Nothing. Um, yeah, more than likely, and it has. I mean, I get it. I get it. I look at it Halloween and I go, it's dated. I can see it. I can understand why people might think it's really boring and kind of hokey. I went to go see uh, Friday the Thirteenth at the cinema not again a few years ago, 
and there was people in the cinema who had never seen it and they were just laughing and you know that way that you're like why are you laughing like shut like the that. fuck up this and watch is this. a classic uh and i don't want to be that guy but it's that way but i understand it it's it's not aged yeah like they are like even nightmare on elm street it's got its scary moments but then it's got his ridiculous moments where uh like Freddy's walking down the alley and his arms like stretched out from yeah. side to side, which is which still gives me the absolute heebie jeebies. Stretch your arms. Yes. Uh I can understand that. But I also think that did things that uh dated it as well, as in the like, certain sequels of Nightmare on Elm Street would do things that were very current at the time. So hey, let's do something about super like Nintendo. Like yeah. that, and then it would date it straight away. So now when you watch it, you're like, God, this film's old. <laughs> um but Luckily, like if you stay away from kind of gimmicky stuff, Nightmare on Elm Street was very gimmicky. Um, and yeah, once you put a gimmick into a film, I think it's that way that nothing dates a film more than putting a gimmick into it. Uh, because it just immediately you're like, oh yeah, that was really that was cutting edge at the time. By the way, those special effects were really cutting edge, and then you're just like, really like that. Uh, whereas again, simplicity, it works. I can understand, but yeah, I do get why people might do it. I can see it in Halloween, but there's just something about it. I think it's more nostalgia for me as well, because this was like a horror film as a kid. It's yeah. They always kind of built up. Nothing really, really happened in them, and just at the end, some people died, and there was always a question mark where the killer would return. Yeah. Uh, we're getting on with this on in the background, and we're almost at the, well, the fun part, the killing. He's about to kill a dog. Yes. Is he about to kill a dog? Yeah. Which? Yeah, she's, yeah, because Lester, poor Lester the dog. Uh, yeah, because Annie, I mean, I do love Annie. Annie's one of these friends that you think, oh, she's a total asshole, though. Why is Laurie friends with her? I don't understand this. And even Linda, you kind of think, yeah, they're kind of assholes. Why, is, why are they friends? Is there, like, a short maybe, supply may, of people Maybe she's uh, doing her homework for them. Maybe, but they seem quite chummy. Uh, but, yeah, so... This is kind of where it all kind of starts. Yeah, because he's just... Basically, the whole setup is Laurie's friend Annie's babysitting the kids on one side of the street and Laurie's babysitting the kids on the other side of the street. So it kind of keeps going between the two houses. Most of the activity is kind of set on Annie's side initially because he's watching Annie um, and watching McCuller as well. Uh, Linda decides that she's going to kind of crash one of them and then take a boyfriend upstairs and have sex uh, and say the word totally a lot. Uh and look, the thing, they make a thing reference even before the thing. It's that you made the thing. It's just, it's meta. Um, it I love just the intro to the thing. Anyway, so it's, that's kind of it. And it's just that way that it's set on these, kind of say, these two locations back and forth and back. Actually, three locations because then it's the Myers house as well. And it's just having Donald Loomis go back and tell the story about Michael Myers every now and again. And it is that way that Donald Loomis becomes almost a caricature of himself, the character, constantly because... And even in the sequels, when he turns up, and he's pretty much in every single one of the sequels. I was going to say he's, he's in, in like most of them. Yeah, he's in one, two, four, five, and six. Uh, and he always said that as long as they would do, as long as he was still alive, and they were still doing them, he would always do them. Uh, he just comes up and just says usually a line about how Michael Myers is evil, or Michael Myers has got you know the, the blackest eyes, or he'll give us some speech, and then that's it. He disappears again. Yeah, it's but just like a little bit backstory. Oh, here yeah. for you, new characters. He's yeah. a mean motherfucker. Yeah. And he, he's ki- it's kind of missed as well in the H2O because obviously he died at that point. But they use his voice to intro a scene and use that way that you kind of need that voice. Uh, and you, it's one of the characters you miss uh, in it. Kind of him just explaining what's going on kind of almost and why he's doing it. Um, but Laurie's so nice. She's just so cool. I, can I, I don't understand why people don't want to hang out with her. I'd want to hang out with Laurie. I'd be that kid in that weird space suit pajama combo that he had that Tommy Doyle seems to wear that I used to always desperately want as a kid but I still don't quite get it now as an adult I'm like but what's it supposed to be <laughs> um, and why do you have a laundry house outside I know like oh here it could be raining and you're taking all your clean clothes outside, outside to get rained on to do. though to be fair when I was a student we had a uh, we lived in halls and we had a, an outside kind of room thing that you had to go and do it it was for the washing machines and kind of dryers and you would go out and I, it was always busy so you would end up having to go out one o'clock in the morning and do it and it was like I'm going to die I'm actually <laughs> going to die out here Michael Myers is going to be standing outside and he's going to be waiting yeah or you open up the stuff and there's like body parts or something you know like yeah 
mm. I was like, Valentine, we Mabel, and then she pops out of the dryer, and she's got a heart cut out. Like Mabel's laundrette, Mabel's laundrette, Mabel. Yeah. Sorry. You're uh, a fountain of knowledge. I am of literally. I, I don't know, and I couldn't tell you like the price of breads. You 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 are like the like the horror version of me. Like if you were to mention anything comic wise, I'd just be like, done. Mm-hmm weird things stay with me and i don't know exactly. why. exactly i am a fountain of useless information yeah uh it's also the fact that i probably watched like my bloody balance about nine million times but then like all slasher films i can re-watch and re-watch and re-watch yes. and re-watch uh because there's just they're kind of there's something special about them yeah and i think it just takes me back to that time of standing in a video shop and going that one like that, and then you would take it home, and it wouldn't be great. It would never be Halloween good, so that's the always way you would look at it. It's never Halloween good. Uh, but then it would always be like certain films that we would always rent out as kids over and over again, because back in the day when you were a kid and you could just rent out, hey, I would rent out Cannibal Holocaust, <laughs> because the guy in the video shop doesn't seem to care. Uh, we would always rent out, it was always Halloween 2, or My Bloody Valentine, and Dawn of the Dead. Uh, those were the three, because it used to be three for 150. That's, that's uh. Uh, and we would sit and watch them over the weekend and it was always the same kind of three films almost in a loop with just occasionally a different slasher thrown in. Uh, you would get your, he knows your alones and your kind of, but there's so many like, oh God, we could just go on about slasher films forever. There's so many good crap slashers like, because they would always have some tenuous link of why the killer was killing the people and like, he knows your own like one of the best ones and it's all to do with, it's so bad, it's to do with a guy killing brides on the night before their wedding because he was rejected Aww. as a groom. Uh, so he stalks. That's sweet. Tom Hanks' first film as well. Uh, he stalks this one bride, and the music is just this rip-off of like, the Halloween music and everything. And it's just, it's, the girl literally tries to hide from the killer four times in the neck of her jumper. She just lifts it over her face. And it's, just, it's just so crazy. But it's, you know, there's so many of these kind of random... They always the killers always had to have a reason. Like my yeah, my bloody Valentine is set in Valentine's. It's always these kind of occasions that have to happen. Final exam it's set in the last like, day of an exam in school, and it's just yeah. There's always got to be this. Uh, it can't just be like it's a Tuesday. It's, I was going to yeah. say every other Tuesday. <laughs> it's a Tuesday. Brenda's alone in the house, and there's a killer. There's we're not going to explain <laughs> it. That's the, but that's the way it normal happens because you watch these like true crime documentaries and they're like, and then she turned off the television and then she was slaughtered. Like that. <laughs> And it's that way, you're just like, that's how it happens. Uh, it doesn't happen on, like, you know, the magical night of Friday the 13th. Which, to be fair, there was a lot of Friday the 13th. And Friday the 13th, right, totally misleading. Because parts 2, 3, and 4 are all set over this course of five days. Because they all follow on from each other. So I'm like, it's not Friday the 13th then. We're right on, like, Tuesday the, like, <laughs> Tuesday the, whatever it is, the 16th. Um, that's where they get away with part two, part three, part four, because it's a follow-on. You can't do that, though. It's not Friday the 13th. Uh, and that always annoyed me, because I was like, and also, it's not the weekend. <laughs> and I was like, it's Friday the 13th. And then, yeah, by the time you get to, like, part three, it might be kind of Sunday. <laughs> and then you think, and part four is set on, like, what, a Wednesday? And you're just like, it makes no sense. It's like, it's midweek. Why are all these people in the woods midweek as well? That makes no sense. Summer. Could be summer. Summer holidays. People still have jobs <laughs> in the summer. Do you quit your job in the summer? No, I do not. Is this an American thing? Is it just called camping during the summer, during midweek camping? Uh, so, yeah. And they deserve to get slaughtered if that's what they're doing <laughs> then. Uh, living off the States. Uh, you know, going camping midweek. Uh, so, yeah. So, set them on Halloween. But you wouldn't set Halloween on Christmas. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, true. That That's very head. true. Yeah, uh, and I forgot about the Christmas horror films. There's loads of Christmas horror. Oh, there's films. a lot. So many good ones. Uh, but yeah, it's it f- it's the start of a dead. It's the it's the first lap of a dead horse, pretty much. It's that way that Halloween is just that way. It's it's yeah, it's like Alien in that sense. It, Alien's kind of quiet and it's kind of it builds it. And luckily, Alien has its own sequels, which are amazing and kind of built up the genre itself. But Halloween is that one that it's like, it's there's your template, here's your thing, this is what you need to do. Here's your first act, your second act, and your final act. This is what you need to do. Here's your characters. And then all these people just went mental with it. And then almost had to go back to the kind of simplicity when going back to horror films, uh, like when Scream came out, they kind of had to almost revert it. 
back to kind of go this is where you need to go back to the story and give it a kind of thing build up build up and yes scream is a bit gorier but it's the 90s and it yeah it had to be a little bit more violent yeah i think if you have a film now a horror film where kind of the level of violence that happened on halloween happened now i think a lot of people would feel cheated because nothing really does happen in it you listen to girls talking about boys and then and they kind of get killed. I am down with that, though, to be <laughs> fair. I, that's that's a good night. I mean, I would happily listen to girls gossip about boys and then just one by one they kind of get killed. <laughs> Not all of them, obviously. Uh, well, apart from the good one. Apart from the good one. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and look at her. She's in the apron. She's making a jack of lantern. I know. She's such a good person. Uh, yeah. And that's it. There's nothing much to say about Halloween apart from how amazing it is, in my opinion. That's all I can go. It's amazing. Just watch it. If you've not seen it, you're probably going to hate it. And I won't agree with you. Yeah. So you're wrong. Uh, what does happen once uh, Laurie does actually make a, well, an attempt to like save herself is... Numerous times. Numerous times. With a coat hanger, she stabs Michael with his own knife as well, which is... She falls in a flight of stairs first. She smashes her hand through a glass door. She does quite a lot. But this is all in the space of a very quick t- it's a very quick ten minutes. Um I think I think the way that the movie goes with it being so slow everything happening so quickly yeah, yeah, it's a is final just like the ultimate payoff right there. Yeah. I mean she's smart. She kinda of plays it really, really well. Um and then She's totally aware of what he's doing, and he get obviously chase. Where she finds all the bodies, it does that kind of classic scene where they're all perfectly set up for her to find, and then kind of he chases her across the. Well, he doesn't chase her; he walks very slowly across the roads, and um, she's kind of almost saved last minute by Doctor Loomis because uh, he hears the kids screaming, and then he kind of does that. So it's she is kind of still saved by a man at the end, but. She kind of she she mean she she done all the dirty work. She did a, a fair amount of dirty work. Oh, and he's dying. Um, <laughs> which is such a creepy scene because that goes on for quite a while. This choking scene, it doesn't go quick, and there's no music. Yeah, and well. you can kind of see the mask kind of creepy, and you're like, oh, is it a face? Is it not a face? I'm not too sure. Yeah, it's just an emotionless blank canvas. Yeah, um, and it's just yeah, oh, slash death. Um. And then we uh, shoot some six times, falls out the window, and then oh, look outside, he's not there anymore. And it, it kind of does this amazing shot, which I don't think anyone ever gives credit for in the end of the film, where it plays his breathing because his breathing is quite an ish, a thing in it because you hear him breathing before oh, you see like, him kind of stuff. Uh, when he's like uh, get stabbed in the yeah. eye with a coat hanger, yeah. you do hear him like breathing, and yeah. it is it's very really, really heavy. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, if you're wearing a rubber mask for the full night, it might be a bit like that. Oh, aye. Um, it's a hot and mess. whatever you get up to at the weekend your own <laughs> inclination so every other weekend yeah uh but yeah so at the end because all these shots of where he's been for the entire night like different places he's kind of hidden or done stuff like that and it replays the shots over with no one there with his breathing getting heavier and heavier and heavier obviously no one so it kind of gives a supernatural element that the night of halloween is kind of doing something and kind of making him this kind of unstoppable force which then does rely on the sequel where all of a sudden it's like he is just like a killing everyone pretty much yeah uh just to still get to jamie lee curtis's character laurie who gets taken to the hospital and then you get the big revelation which wasn't a revelation in halloween it wasn't written for halloween but that she's his other sister uh she was adopted out of the family once he killed his other sister um so it's kind of it gives a purpose of why he's trying to kill uh laurie and why he's in like following her about but you know i kind of like the idea that she just reminds him of his sister and that's why he's doing it because the thing is it's not really laurie that he's if you think he's kind of is he after because is it annie yeah because it's really annie is the kind of not slut shaming her but she's a sluttier <laughs> one and his sister was fairly slutty and it's that way that laurie just kind of is a, just kind of walks into it because in that scenes that we fit they had filmed that for the tv version there's a scene where all the girls say that they've seen him at separate occasions during the day so it's not just laurie it focuses on um so it's this idea that he has fallen the other girls as well but you just don't get to see yeah it. it's just almost like that behavior is like done something to his mind yeah. where uh they, they need to be punished for that type of behavior yeah 
Yeah. Not trying to justify it, but that's... No, it's completely... He's, it's, it's a morality play. It's a complete morality play. And it make, I mean, John Carmen's always says he never wrote it that way, and it's like that set up the kind of template of being any kind of urban legend and stuff is a uh, morality play. It's that way. It's, I mean, the hook in the hand and the kind of the car and stuff like that. They're all about don't have sex, don't have premarital sex, don't go park in your car, don't do that. They're all stories to kind of work. The call is coming from up inside the house. It's like, you know, pay attention to the children and don't like, let's, you know, if you're babysitting, do not. These are all proper like morality plays and Halloween is a morality play. It's that way that the person who's the good girl and, you know, is virginal and this kind of thing, she survives uh, and she's got the smarts to kind of fight. Uh, so, it, yeah, they do work that way. Yep. I think it's not subtle. I think uh, it's, it's, it's right in your face. Yeah, it's they might as well just she might be wearing it, might as well have a blouse on that says virgin. Might as well for the chastity belt on her. She might so. she's wearing a very she's wearing a very, very high weighted pant, so she could have a chastity belt under that. Yeah. Like the, the to be fair, the flares do look like a chastity belt. Yeah. That that's like oh what? Nope. But you know what? She's rocking a blue shirt. I don't care. <laughs> she rocks a blue shirt and she looks good. I think Laura Strode is still a fashion icon. <laughs> uh, I think that blue shirt with a big collar. I mean, and you know what? You can't not not do it without talking about just Jamie Lee Curtis's physical attributes. Because even in this film, they're very still there. And you're that way. The girl had a good body on her. And she's, you know, she's cast in this film because of her mum, pretty much. Uh, her mum being Janet Lee in Psycho. And this is kind of all most psycho s it's john carpenter's version i mean sam loomis's character i was going to actually say yeah psycho. uh the town like the neighboring town uh fairville is from psycho uh so there's so many little connections uh to it and that is pretty much how jim lee curtis they once they thought we'll use her and this will be great for marketing uh and it was and even janet lee appears in halloween h2 when they make an amazing psycho reference uh to it as well so it comes like full circle. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of awesome. Oh, that van. There's always a van like that in every slasher film as well. Yeah. It's like a given. Yeah, it's just like the kind of, the jock mobile almost. Yeah, and it's always got that kind of cool window at the back as well. Like this kind of weird kind of bubble window right at the back. I always wanted a van like that when I was a kid. It looks huge as well. It's an 18 van. Um, but yeah, so Bob and Linda get it as well. And Bob's most iconic. Oh, when Michael Myers dresses as a ghost iconic moment when he just kind of puts the sheet on in the glasses it's yeah. terif- terrifying it's scary and it really really works and again don't have sex and drink beer it's right there it's, it's satan yeah pretty much and you know bob was supposed to be played by dennis quaid really pj souls who plays linda was uh was married to dennis quaid at the time and dennis quaid was going to be do that role but then had something else to do and didn't do it so dennis nice. quaid was almost in this film as well uh, but then obviously went on to the amazing film that is Jaws 3 because that's what you want to do if you want to do a proper horror film two seconds I'm just looking for something oh you're looking for uh, uh, I know exactly what you're looking uh, for right. I've not learned it I, I'll just I just know it's the highest grossing independent film of all time I'll just nip this out once uh, I get it found and also the sets as well There's and the lighting oh I mean, there's so many things in this film that are good. Yeah, every scene apart from almost Laurie's house yeah. is always near pitch black. Yeah, it's in darkness. Which like is also own. maybe again another sign, like, he's afraid of the light. Yeah, creepy, he's watching them. They're making out and he's watching them. Yep, it's another thing, gents. Yeah, he's don't, like, don't creep. Can we also talk about how crap her pumpkin is? <sighs> Always, she's she's a year, nice person. She me. tries. She spent at least twenty minutes doing that in this film, and that's implying longer. But look at that! Come on, it's a nice she's made, smiley like, a friendly face. Friendly looking pumpkin. It's huge. It's a nice face, you know. She's she's trying. She, she can't do scary. Maybe by the second one, like yeah. maybe she's like maybe adds a little crooked teeth tooth here and yeah. there, you know. But. uh I'm yeah. trying to think. There's definitely one of them where she makes pumpkin. It is H2 where she makes a pumpkin. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just that way that... I think because also Laurie's this idea that she's quite childlike as well. Uh, like, that's why she's kind of getting on with the kids. She gets dumped with the other kid as well because the other... Right, Annie goes off to basically have sex. She, she uh, wants some. Yeah, so she's dumped the kid on her. Uh, but it's that way that, yeah, Laurie's good with the kids because I think she is quite childlike as well. But... Oh, look at those turnips on those jeans. 
I do love <laughs> I do love a seventies and eighties fashion. I won't lie, um, but every single kind of wee element in this film is just just perfect. It's just perfectly timed. It's just it is the most perfect one hour twenty one hour and twenty minutes you could spend pretty much as a horror film. It's just really quick as well, which I think some people might see it slow, but I always think it's quite quick. It just fires through. Yeah, so it's a latter half of the movie where the killing starts actually time feels to like speed up for it because everything's happening so soon uh our friends are getting taken out one at a time and then eventual part where michael comes face to face with her so it's just like life yes just like life's a metaphor for life <laughs> your friends will go first <laughs> you will be the last one standing and it will be someone called michael that will come and do it there you go yeah yeah <laughs> I, I like that. That's yeah. That's something good to Don't go by. Don't trust Michaels. Yeah. I, I don't know any Michaels. I think I know some. George yeah. Michael. He's dead. Uh, well, that was his second Michael name. Jackson. Uh, well, he's, he's dead. dead. And he was a bit dodgy. But anyway. Michael Palin? He's still alive. <laughs> Not dead yet. If he dies before this recording comes out, <laughs> I can only apologize. <laughs> and it had nothing to do with me. I love Monty Python. Another Ma- Michael Bolton? If Michael Bolton dies... I apologise. Mm, I mean, I don't apologise, actually. <laughs> Michael Bolton. Uh, and I can't think of any other... Ma- Glenn Michael? I mean, that's a very <laughs> Scottish one. I can't think of any other Michael. Anyway, sorry. Uh, usually, this part of the show... It's just you annoying James. Yes. Much, yeah. So... You, you, just you, you did shoot the fig... <laughs> well, not a figure, but high gross and So... I'll give you the production budget for the movie, and you get three tries to get <laughs> the total domestic gross, uh, total yeah, to, to, domestic total. Hold on, bad Mario. Uh, you'll get three tries to guess the domestic total gross of the movie, mm-hmm. and from what I've seen, it only was released in America in cinemas. No, uh, initially, no, got released, no? In, got released in Britain. Hold on, that's was, like, this thing's a, lying to me. There was a British quad. I have tried to buy it. Hold on, let's find this. Don't lie to me, internet. Oh, the internet lies, people. Hold on, what? I thought everything on the internet was true. No, it's it's all fabrication. Oh shit! There is no such person as Kim Kardashian. Oh, thank fuck. Yeah, see, the internet lies. Is it just a hoax? It's like that film Her with Yakin Phoenix. It's oh, quite Joe Hansen's voice. That's that's her voice is just that something else. But grossly underused Black Widow. Yes. Mm. Yes. Where is a Black Widow movie? Yeah. It just she's like, yeah, they just grossly underuse her in every film. Okay. All I can find here is the US, the take, US domestic, okay, which is right. very selfish. America, <laughs> who would have thought America's selfish? I know. So, the budget for the movie was 300. Hold on, oh, piss off. Hold on, it's just 300 pounds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see if it was made in 300 pounds, it's the best mask, 300 pounds that they've ever cost done. 298. <laughs> the rest of the film was made in two pounds. Uh, production budget. Was three hundred and twenty five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and that was in nineteen seventy nine. So, yep. Domestic take. What do you think it is? Forty two million. <sighs> Close. Is it in the forties? It's in the forties. Forty seven. You dirty bitch! <laughs> and I James never gets this right. I'm I am. I'm done now. It's because I'm the better gay. That's why. Oh. Uh, just the older one that's all it is <laughs> uh yeah no it made huge and if you kind of transfer that in like today's money that would be a crazy amount of money yeah uh and that yeah that's just like the f- that's when cinemas cost like a dollar like pennies to get into as well so it's that way if you try to kind of put that on today's scale it's, it's huge um it's just one of those things. I mean, I always knew that it was one of the most successful independent films because obviously it was made. Do you know why Michael Myers is called Michael Myers? Oh. Yeah, I knew that. I'll give you three guesses. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Let's play this game. Uh, he is called Michael Myers. Right, because... Hold on, let me... Right, oh, three okay. guesses. Okay, I'll, I'll take you up here. All right, guesses. three guesses. Okay, John Carpenter had a friend called Michael Myers and is a total dick. 
No. It was a Billy at school? No. Third one. Got to be... All right, give me a clue, give me a clue. Is it something ridiculous? No. I don't know. Right, I I, I give up my third try. Uh, Michael Myers was the name of the UK distributor of Assault on Precinct 13. Uh, So, basically, Assault on Precinct 13 became a success because it got a lot of like positive feedback in the UK. It did a lot of things. So then the America kind of film festivals picked it up and did that and basically made this man made the success of like John Carpenter and as a tribute he named Michael Myers after him. Because oh, well. he thought that, you know, oh, I'll just give him that character's name and then obviously not realising that it would stick for a long time. And if you say the word Michael Myers, everyone knows who you're talking about. But yeah, that's where Michael Myers boob shot. That's where Michael Myers uh, is isn't he got his name from? That's a really boring fact that uh, uh. I seem to devour and know, really. Uh, so yeah, see, this is only about you see boob jury, but it's a, such a good bit as well. Yeah, it's it's very creepy as well. Not where the, not the boobs for me, but uh, it's, it's garroting her with the telephone cable, and she's like, "What are you doing? Like, what's like, the definition of garroting? Uh, choking with an instrument? Is that garroting? Is it is garroting is that, not choking say, someone like, so hard that it cuts their throat? Uh, well. Te- well, technically, you would need to do that to no, because you can choke someone with someone uh, experience. To death. No, <laughs> that smell you smell right now is not a body <laughs> under the floor. It's not James. <laughs> <laughs> yes, where is James? Uh, he actually has literally just messaged. <laughs> uh, so he's fine. He's safe. He's well. Oh, him. that's fine. I've not killed that's him fine. yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna look up the definition of garroting just because I need to know. Because I always think because you know how people say the garrot foxes. Yeah, that's how I always was like. Ah. What does that mean? How do you spell garot? <laughs> G A R. Google should take the rest. <laughs> Garoppolo? No. <laughs> uh, oh, G-A- garot. Double R? Oh, here we go. Oh, it's, it's uh, going right on Wikipedia. It's G A R R O T E in case anyone oh, is really yeah. wanting to know. Oh, yeah. there's and a picture of a man up. getting gar- like actually getting garroted. Actually getting garroted. Uh, on Wikipedia. Shame on you, Wikipedia. Uh, a garrote or a garrote de ville, which is a Spanish word, uh, is a weapon most often referring to a handheld ligature of a chain, rope, scarf, wire, or fishing line used to strangle a person. Okay. Oh, so is a regot a garrote a garrote? Uh, is it not one of those things? It's like on a stick, and then you can pull it. Yeah. Is that a garrote? Uh, yeah. All oh, right. Okay. That makes sense. Like Sorry. all those uh, super spy movies where someone's got something, you know. Okay. I always thought. Garrotting so was it did technically garrot are there? Yeah. Okay. An Indian version of a garrot frequently incorporates a knot at the centre intended to aid the crushing of the larynx Ouch. while someone applies pressure to the victim's back with usually a foot or a knee. That sounds well done, India. Painful. Uh, Thank you, that India. That and a madras is like your uh, that and samosas <laughs> is like your actual <laughs> contribution to the world. And Cliff Richard, he's Indian. That just blown, well, that just blown your mind. Yeah. 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 I'm sure he thinks it's a gift to the world. Of course. He's uh, wired for sound, don't you know? <sighs> Such a good song. Bad Devil music Woman. Fiddle. Devil Woman. It's a good song as well. Anyway, we're just now going to... We're going from Halloween <laughs> to Cliff Richard. <laughs> they almost go hand in hand, really. Yeah. Uh, imagine him haunting you in the middle. Can you imagine of... actually him watching you outside your window? That would be... That, I'm that'd sure be more lot, terrifying than... Allegedly. Allegedly, he <laughs> might have done that to some people. Allegedly. <laughs> he used to go up with Sue Barker and Una Stubbs. Sorry, I it's random. Useless uh, information again. Yeah, I always know that he was he, Sue Barker. Anytime I see her on like, I was going to say anytime I see her on Question of Sport, like I watch a Question of Sport. <laughs> I see her on Question of Sport when I turn it over because Question of Sport is on. Uh, yeah, they went out together. Apparently, it's a strange one. Yeah, he's a bachelor boy. That's oh, well. all I'm going to say. So. We've thoughts came on Cliff Richard, anyone? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Millennial yeah, if prayer? you've got any uh, thoughts on, tra- uh, on Cliff Richard, then, then write them in. Keep them tweet, yourself. Tweet, tweet <laughs> what your thoughts on Cliff Richard are. And what, then delete the tweet wine? before you send yeah, it. Hashtag mistletoe and wine, but spell wine, W-H-I-N-E. Uh, I found that really funny in my head. <laughs> I'm going to start that hashtag no matter what. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. So, yeah, uh, thoughts so on Cliff Richards? <laughs> What's your favourite Cliff Richard song? This is a Cliff Richard podcast now. 
James will be so happy. Does he like Cliff Richard? Probably not. He is. I bet he He's a Bowie man. Is he a Bowie man? Yeah. Is that because he bought like a David Bowie t-shirt in Primark and is trying to make everyone pretend that he knows who Bowie is? Oh, I'm keeping that in. I'm keeping that I in. I watched just. Labyrinth once, so I love David Bowie. Oh. I love Nirvana when I bought this t-shirt in Primark for eight pounds. Uh, I can see someone getting garroted. <laughs> in the, he would in the not near have the strength <laughs> to put that knee in my back. So, we've came to the end. Fantastic journey well my journey because you just opened your mouth and just let all this sound out about horror which was absolutely fantastic i'm glad you went there with that sentence i was worried what it was going for the first half of it <laughs> and i was like you just opened your mouth and what <laughs> uh yeah so looking back and how it plays well with the reboot and stuff how what would you give out a 10 10 halloween's a 10 really? out of 10 yeah Halloween's a perfect movie. It's that way that it's just perfect. It just is. It's one of these films that you can't say it didn't create start a whole movement in horror or whatever. It, it did. And it's it will go down in history as kind of starting that. And yeah, people can argue that there might have been a f- like a couple of films before it that might have done it, but no, this film really put horror on the map and put John Carpenter on the map and put Jamie Lee Curtis on the map. And just as the perfect horror film f- to me is, uh, so I would always give it a ten. Yeah, uh, for myself, as I said earlier, it I don't feel it resonated as much with me as it did maybe a year a few years ago when I first watched it, which was actually many many years ago. That's what I say. Let's <laughs> oh, not pretend. Right. Thank, that, thank you, thank you. I need that reminding every That's day. Right. Uh, sound. Let's be honest. The soundtrack and theme song is yep. fucking phenomenal. And if you like Jamie Lee Curtis screaming, I mean, <sighs> she screams a lot. Yeah, uh, and she was. I do a like good a good screamer. scream. She was a good screamer. Uh, and it, she, yeah. And I'm not intentionally ripping off a line of from Scream, but girl had a set of lungs in her, and it's <laughs> and it's that way in, in multiple dimensions. But it's that way that yeah, she's known for it, and she was so good, and that's why she worked in horror. And the kind of the horror films that she did herself after this, they were still good horror films. I mean, they're good horror films. She's yeah. good. she was a good, uh, she's an icon. She is a horror. Oh, icon. she is. She's a definition of what a, she is. The definition of scream queen. That's what that is. That came about. Thank you to Jamie Lee Curtis. And then there's been many that's come after her, but she will always be the original kind of scream queen. And that if you don't put that on her, her gravestone, touch wood that the goddess never dies. But. Uh, then that's the that's his, 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 her legacy. This film it always will yeah. be. Uh, I'd I'm trying to think of what I gave Nightmare. I think I gave Nightmare a seven. I would have to go with a six for this. Just I know I. In fact, Jesus can hear you through the roof. I know, I know. I th- I think the earth just shifted there <laughs> when I said that. Is it yeah, yeah, I I would go with six. It is a sl- very slow movie, and you don't see much happen until maybe the last what half hour, really. I mean, you say half hour to the last fifteen minutes of the film. Yeah, but but th- those last fifteen twenty minutes are is turned up to a, up to eleven. Yeah. It's just everything's going. It still has its suspenseful moments, but this is where this entire movie's been building up to all this. So you know what. I'm changing it to a seven. I'll give exactly. it a seven. I'll give it a seven. And do you see even the bit at the beginning of the school when she gets the teachers talking about fate and how fate's immovable like a mountain and you can't escape your fate and it's just that way that this is her fate. This night yeah. is her fate that this is going to happen. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just perfect. It's the perfect collision of a film. Uh, so if you've not seen it, you should see it. Yeah, I would say that. Gauge and also... It. See the sequels. See, see the, the reboot. reboot. Be open-minded. People seem to hate Rob Zombie for some reason. I don't know I why. I love Rob Zombie. I, I love Rob Zombie, but I think some people hate him as a filmmaker. And it's like... He's mm, a really no, good House of a Thousand Corpses was Amazing. maybe overly gory. But then again, Amazing. it's his uh, yeah. his take on stuff. He's wanting to turn it up, which is perfectly understandable. You've seen his, 
his stage show. So it's yeah, it, it puts everything into that. So I left that film and I saw it in the cinema, raging. I was so angry and I hated it so so much. And like I was actually like quite violently angry about it. And then so angry, I went back to see it the next day because I couldn't believe that a film <laughs> had annoyed me so much. And then I came out the second time and I was like, that was one of the best films I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Devil's totally Rejects. Amazing. amazing. Uh, uh, per- perfect ending. Can I just say that? Yep. But Three birds. Is it a perfect ending? Because apparently there's going to be another one. <gasps> mm-hmm. What? So I don't know where it's going to fit in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, what, uh, what else? I've actually not seen that. Not? Oh, Lords no. of Salem's amazing. Uh, uh, 31. Which was alright. I loved that. Yeah, a lot of people didn't like, like it. A, it didn't I get, saw like... It just needed a bit of funding. That was all. It didn't get its Kickstarter money completely. And you could tell some bits, but it was still good. It was really gory, uh, which was Yeah, it was, it was the perfect. Running Man. It was just the Running Man, but a horror version of the Running Man. Uh, and it was amazing. Uh, no, I highly recommend Malcolm Lords. McDowell. Always good. Uh, I recommend Lords of Salem if you've not seen it. Lords of Salem is really good. It's just his take on a Kubrick film. It's his very, it's very slow film as well, but it is creepy as hell. Really good. Uh, and I don't care what anyone says about Sherry Moon Zombie. I think she's a really good actress. Yeah. I know people say, why well, is she always in his films? Because she's always in his stuff. Yeah. Married, you know. Yeah. Chucking chuck the messes, give her a baby. Yeah. And then just comes back into the house. Yeah. So they can buy all those vegan cakes that they all seem to eat on Instagram. No, I'm not stalking them. I'm liking us. I'm liking them all. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, I would check out the reboots. The reboots are good, more so the sequel, as well, because the sequel is astounding. Which I'm sure we will actually cover. Yes. To compare. Yes, 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 yes. And on that note, uh, you can listen to us on SoundCloud and iTunes, and of course on YouTube, and you can give us a like on Facebook. And make sure that you have your notifications turned on for us so that you see any updates that we have. And that's a wrap for this show. I can't do anything right today. (laughs) So you can catch us at Glaswegian Geeks over at SoundCloud, iTunes, and on YouTube. Just have a wee search for us and you'll find all our stuff. And we'll be putting some video stuff up very shortly. Uh, Also, have a look for us on Facebook at Glaswegian Geeks and Twitter at Glaswegian Geeks and on that note what's the podcast called again? oh eh uh, hold is on it, let is me it Glaswegian th- Geeks? yes yes Glaswegian Geeks that's the one subtle and I can see what you did there yeah uh, I'm thinking right horror we'll be doing more horror mm-hmm. and our sign off for normal things oh, what I no, call normal is geek out okay so what can our horror sign off be and because this is you're you're the fountain of oh Horror knowledge, horror. I like that one as well. You're 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 the you're the librarian in every horror movie that gives us the weaknesses of the thousand year old beast that we that we woke up by accident and we're having to. Am say. I the Donald Pleasance of this group? Am yes. I the Sam Loomis? Am yes. I, am I going to give speeches about the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes? Yes. Okay. I can, okay, I can so deal with that. I've got the beard. I'm middle aged. I just need a trench coat and shave my head. I've, 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 got, uh, raise, I've got a shave. Do it now. <laughs> <laughs> One second, we'll just come back. <laughs> so, sign off. Screw your whole pass. <laughs>